Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. Psalm 111 says, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honourable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. What a wonderful God we serve. And I just love that in verse 9. He has sent redemption to his people. What a wonderful heavenly father we have who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to become redemption for us. Jesus has redeemed us through his blood which he shed for us on the cross as he bore our sin bore our shame bore every vile thing we've ever thought done and said and in his dying and in his resurrection from the dead he gives us the gift of everlasting life to all those who will call upon his name what a wonderful wonderful savior we have we're praying together today as we always do Please join with us. We continue to pray regarding the war in Ukraine. We call upon the God who the Bible tells us makes wars cease to the ends of the earth to do exactly that, to make this war come to an end, but not just peace at any price's sake. We pray that righteousness will prevail and that evil will be defeated wherever it is found. We're also praying for our brothers and sisters in the nation of Nepal. Nepal is one of the countries around the world where Christians are persecuted simply for being followers of Jesus Christ. So let me lead to, read to you from the World Watch List booklet regarding what life is like for Christians in the nation of Nepal. Most Christian persecution in Nepal comes from radical Hindu groups who want the country to return to Hinduism. Though the country is no longer an official Hindu state, Christian converts from Hinduism experience significant pressure from their families and communities. If discovered, they might be expelled from their family home or even violently attacked. Christians who are members of indigenous groups might also be subjected to violent forms of persecution. Anti-conversion laws and the destruction and forced closures of churches contribute to limiting religious freedom. Please join with us later as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Nepal and, as I say, as we continue to pray regarding the war in Ukraine. But now let's turn our attention once again to worshipping our God and Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to sing together that great rousing old hymn rejoice the lord is king god bless you as we worship him together today rejoice the lord is king Give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. I say, rejoice. Jesus, the Savior, reigns, the God of truth and love. Our stains, he took his. 
going to be looking today at a passage in 2 Kings chapter 7. But before we get into the text of that, let's just take a moment to assess the scene, what was happening when these events took place. This came at a time when Israel had been divided into two kingdoms, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. And at this particular time, the uh, kingdom of Israel have had a large army from Syria come against them and Samaria which at the time is the capital of the kingdom of Israel has come under siege and this siege is so severe that people are resorting to cannibalism even to just to try and stay alive people are dying of starvation if you just look at one chapter before in chapter 6, we see this recorded. It says, as the king of Israel, this is verse 26 of 2 Kings chapter 6. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him saying, help my Lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? Then the king said to her, what is troubling you? And she answered, this, son, this woman said to me, give me your son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. People had resorted to cannibalism. People were lying. People were desperate to try and stay alive. But the situation was that if this siege continued for much longer, then the people in the city would all have died of starvation. And into that situation, God sends a miracle. This is picking up now in chapter 7. This uh, happened in verse 6 says, The Lord caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. 
So the situation now is that the army that has come against Samaria have fled in panic. The way is clear. There is no more siege. But the people inside the city don't know that they have gone. So the people in the city are still starving. And then it tells us that there were four leprous men, four men who had leprosy, who were at the gate of the city. And they say to one another, this is going back to verse three, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. These four leprous men who are starving, just like everybody else's, make this decision to go to the camp of the Syrians. They don't know at this stage that the Syrians have fled. But when they come to the camp, they find that everything has been left behind by the Syrians. And it tells us in verse 8, when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. These four lepers discovered that the enemy had disappeared. There was food readily available. There was no reason now why they should die. And they were loving what was going on they could go into any tent and there was food aplenty there was gold there was silver there was clothing there was riches probably beyond their wildest dreams and they could have just sat back and thought life is good life's great this is wonderful but in verse 8 it says then they said to one another we are not doing right this is a day of good news and we remain silent. This is a day of good news. A good news day. How many of those do we get? You look at the headlines these days. Everything's miserable. Everything's depressing. Everything is just tragedy and, and atrocity and, and starvation and misery. It's all awful. But this day is a day of good news the lepers say to one another they could if they had so chosen just said well do you know what i'm all right jack forget about everybody else let's just feast let's just enjoy this let's keep it to ourselves we are now the richest men in the whole of the land but they say we're keeping this to ourselves that is not right we should not keep this good news to ourselves the people in the city were starving. Even with the enemy gone, they did not know that the enemy had gone. And so they would have continued to starve. They would have died from starvation, not knowing the good news. They were effectively condemned to death simply by doing nothing, even though a way had already been made for them to receive the food and the supplies and everything that they needed in order to live, to feed well, to bring up their children and to rebuild their lives. Everything had already been provided, but they were living in ignorance of that. They didn't have to do anything in order to die. They didn't have to kill themselves. They didn't have to go to war against anyone else. They didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was remain in the city and they were condemned to die, even though the way had been made for them to enter in to life once again. And when you turn to John chapter 3 and verse 16 such a well-known verse of scripture for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life this is good news 
This is good news right here. God gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In other words, we can be taken from death into life. We can go from being dead in our sins to receiving the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. But we have to do something about it. The people in the city, first of all, they had to be told the good news. But even once they had been told the good news, they had to do something about it. They had to go and see for themselves. If they didn't, they would remain in the city. They had to do nothing else. They would have died of starvation. The verse after John 3.16, Jesus says this. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You think that's wonderful. The world is saved through Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that the world through him might be saved. The city was saved through the Syrians fleeing. The city was saved through God performing a miracle and throwing those enemy forces into confusion. But there was still something else that needed to happen. Why? Because Jesus goes on to say in John 3 and verse 18, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practising evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know, the people in the city had a choice to make. When the lepers came and they told them that they had found the camp, that they had found the place deserted, that they had found food, they had found riches, they had found treasure, they had found everything necessary for a, a sustained life. The people in the city had a choice. Would they believe the word of the lepers? If they believed the word of the lepers and they went to see for themselves, there was food, a plenty. There were riches. There were supplies. There was clothing. All of the things that the people in the city had been desperate for and were dying without was there outside the city. All they had to do to die was absolutely nothing. All they had to do to live was to believe the word of these four lepers and go and see for themselves. You know, when we preach the gospel, we are not saying, look how good we are. We're not saying, look how wonderful we are. Listen, this was for lepers. This was for unclean men who came to the city. They said, look, we have found food. If God would provide this food for us who are unclean, then what will he do for you who are according to the law of Moses clean? They are saying, in effect, come, it's there. It's available for anyone. And we, when we preach the gospel, we're not saying we're better than you. The lepers were not better than the people in the city. They simply knew that they had found mercy. They had found grace in time of need. And the news was too good not to share it with others. In the next chapter of John's gospel, Jesus goes to a woman in Samaria and it says in here that Jesus has this conversation with the woman and he tells all about her life and she goes into the city 
And she says, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. And it says, so when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his own word. When the woman came saying, this is the Messiah. This is the man who told me everything I've ever done. You have to come. You have to come and see for yourselves. You will find something so wonderful if you will just come. The people of the city had a choice. Would they believe her? A woman not of great repute. Would they believe her and come to the Savior? Come to the Redeemer? Come to the one who gives the gift of everlasting life? Or would they stay where they were, do absolutely nothing and never know the eternal life, the joy, the peace, the righteousness, the right standing with God, the reconciliation with God the Father that only comes through Jesus Christ. All they had to do not to receive it was absolutely nothing. But in verse 44, verse 42 rather of John chapter 4. It says, then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the saviour of the world. All anybody has to do to be condemned, to go to hell, is literally nothing. You don't have to be a particularly bad person. You don't have to be a Hitler. You don't have to be a Stalin. You don't have to be a, 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 a member of a terrorist group. You don't have to commit murder or any of those things in order to go to hell. Jesus says, whoever does not believe is condemned already. Condemned already. That is the path that we were on. That is the path that we deserve because of sin. And the Bible tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And he offers the gift of everlasting life. To receive that gift, you have to come to him. You have to come to him. And receive the gift of everlasting life. Don't just take my word for it. Come to him yourself. And receive the gift of everlasting life. To go to hell. To be condemned forever. You literally have to do nothing. But let me tell you. God's plan was never for man to go to hell. God's desire is not that man should go to hell. That's why when God saw the road that mankind was on, that one way street to hell, that conveyor belt to hell, which we were all on, condemned already because of sin. God did not delight in that, but he sent his son to take our place on the cross, to die our death, to bear our sin, to bear the punishment that our sin deserved so that Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can be plucked off that one way road. You can be plucked off that conveyor belt and enter in to everlasting life. Not to receive everlasting life. You just have to do absolutely nothing. You can ignore this. That's your choice. But don't blame God. He has made a way. He has made a way of salvation. Through sending his son, Jesus Christ, who died for you, who is risen from the dead and who is able to save all those who will call upon him. He is able to save you to the uttermost, to reconcile you with God, to save you from hell and to give you the gift of everlasting life, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit as you enter the kingdom of heaven. So let me ask you a question. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? I challenge you today. Come to Jesus. See for yourself. See for yourself. Don't just sit there doing nothing. He who does not believe is condemned already. Come to the one who takes no delight in that. Come to the one who sent a son to save you. Come to the Father, 
through Jesus Christ and receive forgiveness of sin, receive the gift of everlasting life. It is yours today, freely given, if you will come and accept it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we have access to the throne of grace to attain mercy and grace in time of need through the blood of Jesus. And so we come to you now, Father, on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Nepal. Father, I pray especially for those who have been expelled from their families, who have been violently treated by their families. Lord, I pray that you would help them to find a place of safety, a place of security, a place of peace. I pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe from any who would seek to do them harm. Lord, we pray that you would cause the government in Nepal to change laws in a way that allows greater religious freedom. Lord, we pray that you would give our brothers and sisters in that nation the knowledge of God in greater measure every day, that they would know your presence with them at all times, in all ways, no matter what is going on, Lord, I pray that you would enable them to stand strong, to keep their eyes fixed on you. And I ask, Lord, that you would give them the strength and the boldness to continue preaching the gospel. Lord, I pray that through them, many would be saved, that lives would be changed. Lord, I pray that you would enable them to stand firm to the end, to run the race to the end, knowing that there is a reward for them in the kingdom of heaven. Help them, Lord, we pray. Help them, strengthen them. And Lord, we do pray regarding this war in Ukraine. Lord, we don't understand with our human eyes sometimes why this war has been allowed to go on for so long. Lord, you are the one who makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. Lord, you are able to save a nation in a day. Lord, we ask you to turn this whole ghastly situation around, that you would bring this war to an end. Lord, however you do it, whether that is through diplomacy, whether that is through simply both sides being exhausted, whatever it is, but Lord, bring this war to an end, that lives can be rebuilt that families can be reunited, that those who have lost loved ones would be able to grieve properly. And Lord, we pray that you would bring forgiveness into this situation. Lord, we know that in war, so often people hold on to resentment, hatred for so long. But Lord, I pray that you would allow forgiveness to be released that there could be proper reconciliation. But Lord, we pray that you would bring this war to the right end, that it would not just be peace at any cost, but the righteousness would prevail, that evil would be seen to lose. We ask it all in your name, Lord. We look to you. We look to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's one more pray, prayer that we can pray today. If the message struck your heart today, it was a strong message and I make no apologies for that because the message of salvation from hell is such an urgent one. The Bible tells us today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable hour. Why? Because you don't have yesterday and you don't know whether you will have tomorrow. But you do have today. You do have now. I urge you, surrender your life to Christ and receive the gift of everlasting life in him. 
The Bible says that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. To confess Jesus as Lord means you make him Lord of your life. It means it's his will that goes now, that you turn away from sin and choose to follow him with everything you've got. He promises to give you the Holy Spirit to dwell within you and enable you to live this new life in him. But you have to come. You have to make a choice to do nothing is the road to hell. But to come to Christ is the road to everlasting life. So will you pray with me now and surrender your life to him? Lord Jesus I am a sinner. The Bible is very clear. And I recognise I cannot save myself from my sin. I can never be good enough to save myself from sin. And so I need a saviour. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the Son of God who the Father gave that whoever believes in him should have everlasting life. I thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. You died on the cross in my place. You bore the punishment for my sin so that I can receive forgiveness and the gift of everlasting life. And I thank you, Jesus. I believe you are risen from the dead and I believe that that is how you are able to save me today. And so, Jesus, I turn away from sin. I turn away from the old way. And I choose to follow you. I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. And I ask you to be my Lord. Please save even me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I will love you and serve you and follow you as best as I can for the rest of my life. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit to enable me to do that, not in my own strength, but in the strength that you give. I ask you to save me, to be my Lord. I am yours, Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer and truly meant it from your heart, if you confess Jesus as Lord, then he will have saved you even as you prayed that prayer. But there's just one more step I want you to take. This will not save you, but it's a wonderful thing to do. Jesus said, if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. I urge you to get in touch. Let us know that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. We will love you and pray for you, pray with you, help you in whatever way we can as you begin this exciting new life in Christ. If you're anywhere in the Clevedon area, then please come and join us at the community centre on Prince's Road at 10.30 on Sunday mornings. Of course, you can get in touch on the phone or via email. The details will be on the screen at the end. If you're not in the Clevedon area, well, please get in touch anyway. We would love to hear from you. And of course, we will be back on YouTube at the same time next week. That's 10 a.m. UK time. But please get in touch Please let somebody know that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and we will help you in whatever way we can. So until next week, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he give you peace. May he make his face to shine upon you. God bless you. Until next week. Bye bye.